Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In one of my videos released last month, I covered the early evolution of the Euornithes, the broader group to which modern birds belong. First appearing during the early Cretaceous about 130 million years ago, these often beaked and toothy animals frequently inhabited either semi-aquatic or terrestrial niches, in contrast to the largely arboreal and antiornithines. Many of the most well-known forms have been recovered from the Liaoning region of China, although Euornithes had spread widely by the later Cretaceous, with their remains known from across Eurasia, South America, and probably elsewhere. As part of this radiation, a derived subgroup had emerged by about 100 million years ago, possibly even earlier. These were the Ornithurines. Continuing on from the lifestyle pioneered by their more basal ancestors, these avians were still mostly semi-aquatic or shorebird-like, although the remains of early members of the group are poorly preserved and often of controversial origins. Ornithurines are united by certain anatomical features, such as possessing tails shorter than the femur and being composed of less than six caudal vertebrae, which were fused in adult individuals. All of these animals, which would include the famous gull and tern-like ichthyornithines, the often flightless semi-aquatic Hesperornithines, and of course modern birds themselves, descended from a common ancestor that was probably similar to the genus Gansus discussed in part one of this examination. Although these lineages are well known, there are a ton of more mysterious forms known only from single scraps of bone, thus making it difficult to say much about them. One genus, the Achaeornis, is among the better known of these, with a holotype consisting of a semi-complete skeleton lacking a skull. Dwelling in what is now Kansas about 83 million years ago, this roughly chicken-sized animal was once thought to be a species of the contemporary Apatornis, although later studies have found it to be a valid taxon. Yakionis was a gull-like avian that lived close to the shores of the western interior seaway and probably fed on fish and cephalopods. Although, as its skull is currently unknown, we cannot say any more about its lifestyle. The aforementioned Apatornis was similar, albeit notably smaller, as was the genus Gil Davis from the same time and region. Other forms were native to South America as well, including the poorly known Cookney from Lake Cretaceous, Argentina, and the 300 gram Limonavis, which has some features of the skeleton which are convergent with those of Paleonaths. However, Perhaps the oddest of these basal ornithurines was Gargantuavis from the Campanian and early Maastrichtian of France, Spain and Romania. Known from very partial remains existing of femurs, neck vertebrae and pelvises, this was the largest Cretaceous avian so far described, being about the size of a female ostrich and potentially weighing up to 141 kilograms or 311 pounds. Although the skull is unknown, the structure of the vertebrae suggests a long neck, which, when combined with the rest of the skeleton, indicate that this was a ratite-like flightless forager. It would not have been a fast runner, with its legs adapted for graviportal walking, similar to the extinct elephant birds of Madagascar. Gargantuavis was an insular species, with a relatively slow growth rate, similar to modern kiwis with its remains being rare in comparison with the non-avian dinosaurs that lived alongside it, including Abelisaurids, the Ornithischian Rhabdodon, and the Titanosaur Ampelosaurus. It is interesting that a large flightless avian could evolve alongside these animals, showing that big flightless members of Aviolae could inhabit the same ecosystems as their non-avian cousins. The recent discovery of a nearly complete pelvis from Hateg Island in Romania was purported to show very primitive traits, with the authors of the paper suggesting that Gargantuavis was actually a close relative of the mysterious and odd Balor Bondoc. However, a 2020 rebuttal of this idea argued for a more traditional placement in Ornithuri. A more well-known group that definitely places within Ornithuri are the Ichthyornithines. Filling niches similar to those held by gulls and terns today, these animals first appear in North America by around 95 million years ago and were common residents of the Western Interior Seaway. Only two genera are known, with by far the most famous being Ichthyornis itself, which lived in marine and nearshore environments in what is now Canada and the central and southern United States between 95 and 83 million years ago. It was clearly a very common and successful genus with its skeleton showing a curious mixture of basal and derived traits. 
it would have looked somewhat like a pigeon-sized gull, albeit with a disproportionately large head, and a beak lined with small curved teeth, useful for snagging fish and cephalopods. The wings and breastbone were very modern in appearance, suggesting strong flight ability and placing it as a close relative of true birds. A study on an ichthyornis endocast reveals that it had a relatively basal brain compared to modern birds, similar to that of Archaeopteryx and other non-avian theropods. Conversely, it had a palate remarkably convergent with that of modern neonaths, and studies of ichthyornis growth patterns have shown that this animal matured to adulthood in a rather short, continuous process, unlike the protracted growth period of Anantionotheans. While the genus appears to have died out by around 83 million years ago, fragmentary fossils of very similar animals have been found in Cenomanian age deposits in Russia, as well as in Campanian and Maastrichtian sites in North America. A close relative, Janavis, was officially described in 2022 from late Maastrichtian aged rocks in Belgium. It would have looked much like Ichthyornis but was substantially larger, being about the size of a modern cormorant and weighing between 1.2 and 1.6 kilograms. Its toothy skull possessed a flexible palate like that of most modern birds aside from paleonaths such as ostriches and emus. This overturns the older idea that a hard inflexible palate was ancestral for modern birds with the Paleonaths now thought to have developed this feature independently. The fact that Jan Avis lived just 800,000 years or so before the KPG boundary demonstrates that more basal avians were doing just fine before the mass extinction, with this event wiping them out alongside the generally non-marine and antiornithines. Often living alongside these toothed gull analogues were another far more specious group of ornithurines, the Hesperornithes. These were a lineage of specialised semi-aquatic diving avians that first appeared around 100 million years ago, many of which would have resembled large flightless grebes or cormorants, native to the northern hemisphere, with a majority of named genera having been found in North America. Hesperornithines were inhabitants of shallow shelf seas, utilising slightly hooked beaks equipped with small sharp teeth to grab fish. Basal forms such as the early genus Analiornis were quite small and probably still capable of flight, living much like modern loons or grebes. Interestingly, while the majority of these animals became large and flightless later in the Cretaceous, one small form, Brodavis, persisted right up until the end of the period, dwelling in North America and Mongolia until the KPG boundary about 66 million years ago. This merganser-like animal was the only Hesperornithine known to have inhabited freshwater environments, with its skeleton being notably less dense than that of its more derived relatives, indicating that Brodavis could probably still fly. The transition to a more fully aquatic niche can be seen in the genus Baptornis, which lived in and around the western interior seaway between 83 and 80 million years ago. Comparable to modern Anhingas in size, the heavy bones of this animal suggest a flightless lifestyle, with concentrations of the remains of juvenile individuals being frequently found in the northern parts of its range in Canada and Alaska. Like modern penguins, Baptornis were probably migratory, travelling up the interior seaway in the summer months to breed near the then temperate North Pole. More derived forms expanded in size, with the type genus Hesperornis itself being about the size of an adult human measuring about 1.8 metres long. Dwelling in North America and Russia between 83 and 72 million years ago, Hesperornis possessed only tiny vestigial wings and utilised its strong hind limbs to propel itself through the water. Like most members of the group, its legs were positioned far back on the body, much like in modern aquatic birds such as penguins, loons and grebes. Although still certainly clumsy walkers when on land, Reanalysis of its hind limbs have revealed similarity to the still upright walking cormorants, meaning that Hesperornis may have waddled rather than sliding about on its belly, living alongside a variety of dangerous predators, including large sharks, plesiosaurs and mosasaurs. This animal would have needed to be careful while diving, much like modern seals attempting to evade orcas and great white sharks. Studies of Hesperornis ontogeny have shown that this genus as well as other members of its group, reached adulthood relatively quickly, similar to modern birds and Ichthyornis. A later genus, Canadaga, 
was both the largest known Hesperornithine, as well as being one of the last, living in what is now the Northern Canadian Territory of Nanavut until about 67 million years ago. Although this region is very cold today, during the late Cretaceous global temperatures were significantly higher, meaning that the North Polar region would have been cool temperate rather than freezing. Still, the large size of Canadaga, measuring up to 2.2 meters or 7.2 feet long, may have been an example of Bergman's rule, where the body size of animals increase in colder environments. Like their ichthyornithine cousins, the Hesperornithines died out at the end of the Cretaceous period, with their mostly large body sizes by this time negatively impacting their chances of survival. Other late Cretaceous ornithurines were also present, but these are mostly very poorly understood and are often represented by singular scraps of bone, so there is very little I can really say about them. A large number are known from the Maastrichtian Hell Creek and Lance formations of the western United States, although most have not been given official names due to their fragmentary nature. These tend to show a number of similarities to modern charadriforms, the gulls and related shorebirds, and the prosolariforms, the petrels and relatives, although it is very difficult to say whether this is due to convergent evolution or not. At the Lance Formation, at least 10 different avian species of this type were present, showing how members of Ornithuri were dominant in coastal and riverine ecosystems. Among the more notable examples were the genera Chimolopteryx and Ceramornis, which were relatively small shorebird-like animals, probably living like modern plovers and sandpipers. Although sometimes considered to be actual charadriforms, the most recent and extensive study of ornithurines I could find suggested that these animals were very close relatives of neonithes or aves. While this latter group is of course incredibly successful in modern times, diversifying explosively after the KPG extinction event, unambiguous members of neonithines hailing from the Cretaceous are very rare indeed. As mentioned earlier, some of the mysterious ornithurines from Hell Creek and Lance formations may very well be related to modern birds in some way, although we still need much better fossil material to be sure. The Antarctic Vergavis, as well as other potential Cretaceous and Seriforms, may be close relatives of living ducks and geese, although not all paleontologists accept this. As of now, the only confirmed late Cretaceous neonithine is Asterionis, from the Maastrichtian of Belgium, this small terrestrial bird, weighing an estimated 394 grams, is known from a very well-preserved toothless skull, which unambiguously shows traits similar to both galliforms, the chicken-like birds, as well as the duck-like and seriforms. Living in a subtropical coastal environment, Asterionis would have been a generalist forager, feeding on insects, seeds and fallen fruit. The presence of this animal in Maastrichtian deposits proves that not only were neonithines present in the late Cretaceous, but that the three modern major groups, the Paleonaths, the Galloanserans, which Asterionis was a representative of, and the neo aves had all diverged by this time. The generalised habits, terrestrial niche and small size of birds like Asterionis were probably key to helping neonithines survive the KPG extinction event, giving rise to the staggering diversity of modern forms. However, the evolution of living birds, their early radiation and the controversies surrounding it will have to wait for a future video. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the Hyraxes, those somewhat guinea pig-like relatives of elephants and sirenians. See you again soon. Cheerio.